Hey everyone, you may have seen those recent videos on the new plan designer for Power Apps, or it's not just for Power Apps, it's actually for the entire Power Platform, right? Everything in the Power Platform. We're talking Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, Copilot Studio, and I believe Power BI and maybe even Power Pages. I feel like this plan designer is going to work through all of it, but let's talk today about why I think you should be learning plan designer today. So let's get into it. This is the plan designer and this is where I have preview features on currently right now today is generally available, but you can see right here, there's a checkbox. You see that checkbox right here, right here above me. That's include preview features. So there's even more new stuff that's coming out. I just want to talk about, you know, why you should be learning this and then we'll go into, you know, how we can use it. So in my opinion, no matter your level in the power platform, whether you are brand new learning, whether you are a maker or a developer, or you're an architect, or you're a CEO, CIO at the top level. I think it doesn't matter. I think plan designer is useful for you. It's gonna teach you how to create a data model. If you're an architect, let's say you're an architect, you're managing many people using the Power Platform, it comes out with a plan. It shows you the data tables. You have documentation, right? A lot of these citizen developers are creating Power Apps, and, and that's where I'm at right now. There's so many people creating Power Apps and Power Automates. There's no documentation. The images and the PDFs that you upload with it are even documented in references and kept there in the solution. So all of that documentation is there and then people are gonna start uploading images. You see here, add sources, provide more detail. So you're gonna have this beautiful solution of all this documentation and then you're gonna have you know either your app or Power Automate or an agent or maybe even Power Pages or Power BI. So all that documentation is helpful for you if you're an architect or even in the C class and you just want to see, you know, what's going on and and it gives you a nice visual of your project or solution. So let's go ahead and try one. Currently right now and I'm not sure if Microsoft will change this, it is Dataverse only. So when I say Dataverse only, that does mean premium. So that does mean a premium either Power Apps or Power Automate, whichever you're using. Um, to use the Dataverse. So I was trying to think of a good idea. I was thinking, you know, something good for this demo. Let's do an inventory tracking app. I put in here, we need an inventory app to manage laptops, tablets, and other tech equipment. Uh, let's be more specific. So right now I put this in Copilot. I got a prompt out. Let's be more specific. And other equipment, monitors, and, and docking stations assigned to employees. Each should have a serial number, condition status, asset type, purchase date, warranty expiration. I like that. IT admins. So notice that it says this IT admins. It's good that you have these different users. So you have IT admins and then you have users. Can assign or unassign devices to users and employees can request new equipment. Include reminders. Maybe we're not going to do reminders. I mean, maybe that will integrate a power automate, but we won't work on that today, but we'll leave it in there, okay? We have this simple prompt. Now, I believe as of right now, your prompt can be between up to about, I think it's 4,000 characters, and then it just kind of cuts off. But what's more important is this area right down here, add sources to provide more detail. What I'm going to recommend is when you do this, one, do you have an example form? I think that's really helpful. Do you have an example form? Two, do you have your own entity relation diagram? One thing I've noticed is when I was working with the teammate, when we started adding more images and adding in the forms, Copilot stopped hallucinating as much, right? And that was very helpful. You know, you don't want Copilot to start hallucinating and planner or this plan designer is Copilot first. But before we build that, Let's, let's try and do it without images first. So let's just go ahead and start it. I'm gonna do it without images first. So look at that, because we use the word employee, because we use the word IT admin, we then now have two user requirements. Very helpful to list out the exact people that will be using the app. And what's really important is up here, look at the top right. You see, we have the requirements agent, the process agent, the data agent, the solution agent. 
Think of this like your AI team. Each one of these agents is specialized in their own grounded data. So you can see down here at the bottom, right? The requirements agent uh, generated the user requirements section. How does it look? So how does it look? And right here, you can go ahead and start editing. And I just wanna add one main reason you should start learning Planner, the plan designer today, is this is only going to get better. So you have the thumbs up and thumbs down. I know maybe it's not that important, but think two years down the road. Think where plan designer is gonna be two, three years down the road. Imagine it starts fully making your own power apps, your own power pages. It starts making your own flows. It starts making an, a, a co-pilot agent also on top of it. The more we give it thumbs up and thumbs down, and I, I don't work for Microsoft, but the better this is gonna be for the future. So if it's far off your prompt, then give it a thumbs down. But if you like it, if you think it's pretty good, you know, give it a thumbs up. You can request new equipment, the status, receive notifications, yeah. View assign equipment, report an issue, and return equipment when no longer needed. I think that's good. You can even respond why. I know maybe you think this is not important, but for me, I think it's super important that we start doing this today. This is gonna be huge in the future. And let me just tell you a story about my past. So back in the day, back in the day, maybe how, how long ago was it when Power BI came out? When Power BI came out, I was working only in Power BI desktop. And I was younger and I thought I knew everything. And I didn't realize that Power BI was going to be as big as it is. And I thought I knew, I was writing R code, I was writing, you know, I was doing the, the data models. I knew Power BI very well. But what happened next? I didn't think Power BI was gonna be as big as it was. But then what happened? So Power BI became this cloud version of Power BI. It's this huge thing called Fabric and there's all this functionality there. And now I've kind of lost my vision of what it is. I, Fabric is super, super detailed. There's so much in there. But that's just my story is, I started off with Power BI Desktop. I was like, I know this, I'm good. I got my certification, I was fine. Then it came out in cloud, I had to do some relearning. I was like, wow, I didn't realize all this new functionality was gonna come out. And then, well, then it became Fabric and now I should have paid more attention to it. I'm, I'm not as skilled in Fabric as I should be. And so just think about the same thing with Planner. Let's just ask Copilot, when did, Power BI release to the public. What year? Now, when did Power BI come out? So we're talking 2015. I'm seriously talking 10 years ago. It started for Power BI as Office 365 before evolving into business intelligence tool it is today. Now, when did Fabric come out? So you can see it took, you can see it took eight years for Power BI to turn into this integrated tool of Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse Analytics, and Power BI. Now it's like this big platform, right? It's kind of morphed into something. A lot of you are thinking, I know how to create a Power App. I don't need to be co-pilot first. I know how to do this. Well, I wanna learn how to do this. That's my opinion. I wanna learn how to do this. It's gonna be faster. It's gonna create everything for us. It's gonna give us all these templates. And eight years down the road, where will plan designer B. Next up, I want to ask another question. I could Google search this if I wanted to, but I'm just going to say, you know, what does Gartner predict for agent, agentic AI in the future? I've, I've seen some related um, topics on this, but look at this right here, right here. By 2029, 80% of common customer service issues will be resolved without human intervention, leading to a 30% reduction of operation cost. And this is from Agentic AI. So Agentic AI is this right here. We have our agents all working together, all grounded in their knowledge, working together, talking to each other, and then I'm the human that works with them. So by 2029, Gartner is predicting that agentic AI is gonna solve 80% of problems. We should be learning this. So let me just go back. I feel like there's too much here and this is not everything I wanted. Maybe the um, prompt I gave it was just a little too much. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to whiteboard. 
So let me just draw a simple diagram. I'm just going to have right employee. So right here, employee. And there's an inventory. And then there's reminders. All right. Reminder. Reminder emails. Right, so something just super simple just for this demo purpose. I'm, and maybe now I'll just do a simple form, right? So I'll just do a simple form. And this is what it's going to contain. It's going to uh, contain serial number. Uh, what else was there? Condition status. Asset type. Uh, purchase date. And we're going to take out warranty. Um, I don't want to do warranty. We're just going to take that out. And so we have a simple form, right? And then I'm going to upload this also. Very, very simple form, right? I'm sure, I'm sure that when you start doing your forms, it'll be more professional than this, but this is just for demo purposes. All right. So now we're back to our prompt, right? So I'm going to take out warranty, purchase date and purchase date. And now I'm going to upload those two, uh, two images I just drew. All right, so you can see I have my two images. Imagine you have an actual form at your workplace. It's already nice and beautiful. You could just upload it as a PDF or an image, a screenshot. You can upload your form. Now what I think is important is tell Copilot that to use those images. Use, use the images attached for the simple form for each piece of equipment. Use the form example.png attached for the simple form for each piece of equipment. Use the ERD example.png for a simple uh, entire solution. Keep the solution simple. And then let's make sure that include preview features is on. And so now let's see how it, it uh, now let's see how it creates. So this time it should be more simple than what we had before. It's going to hallucinate a little bit less. We have some images in there. Oh, look, it actually added three processes. So we have the request, the inventory management and the reminder. I like that. So actually this is making more sense to me. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and say it looks good. All right. So it's very simple. Employee equipment, equipment request, equipment, equipment condition and return equip and return reminder. All of that is looking good. Now, what's important is if you do want to make changes, you can come in here and look at the process, how it all flows. You can look in there. You can even go into each data uh, data table and look at how the ERD is made. So we have condition, equipment, and you can see the keys here, right? So equipment, the key is right here to serial number, employee name, employee name, Return reminder on the serial number. So all that is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and accept. I like the way this looks. So it looks good. Okay, so now we are in the solution agent. So if we come over here, we're in the solution agent. It's saying, let's take a look in here. We have a Canvas app, a flow, and a report. Look at that, a report. That's really neat. And that's even a Power BI symbol. So... All of this stuff is new features. I mean, it, I don't think it's all gonna work just yet, but wow, that's exactly what I want, right? I want a Canvas app, I want a Flow, and I want a Power BI. Thumbs up, that is great. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to keep it simple. I didn't want two Canvas apps. I didn't want multiple Flows. This is doing better than even I predicted. So I'm gonna say, hey, this looks great. I love it. So now we can come in here and you can see, right, we need to save the tables. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the tables. I like the way they look. Everything's saved and you can see they're all Dataverse tables. We have our Dataverse tables, all looks good. So let's go back to the um, technology. So now when I click here, re create and replace with existing, there's also a button here, convert to model driven. If you prefer model driven, you can do that. So you can even activate uh, Copilot right here Describe what you would like to change. So we have Copilot right here to help us. Any changes that we want, 
I'm gonna go ahead and create the Canvas app. And so now you can see, look at this one. We actually have four screens. I like this. Or And all of this is working. Oh, look, we got Charlie Brown in here. All right. I like you even better, uh, Microsoft. We got Charlie Brown as our first one. So we can see our employee names. We have equipment. We can see our equipment. Let's look. What did we ask for in our image? Do you remember our image? In my image, I asked for four things. Serial number, condition status, asset type, and purchase date. Perfect. That's why you should upload a form with it. I totally think you should upload a form anytime you try and do the plan designer. It also keeps it in a nice little package in that solution. And then we have equipment requests. So you can see the request date, it kind of does the serial number. All of that is beautiful equipment conditions. It even came up with its own conditions and you can change this if you wanted to. So let's say we wanted to make some changes, maybe right here. We don't want to just see the uh, serial number. We come in here and we say, hey, I also want to see, you know, the equipment type or the asset type. Like show me the asset type also. So we have monitor and we could even change different colors. So I'm up here in color, right? And so you can activate Copilot right here. So you can actually, you can create a formula, right? Describe the formula. But what I like to do is I just, I like to write the comments. So if I do two slashes, this is gonna actually activate Copilot in a comment. If asset type is equal to monitor, make the color blue and I'll just press enter. And now it's generating with Copilot. It's gonna generate a formula for, for me. And then you could just press tab, it accepts it. And so now you can see monitor is blue. So you see how I actually activated Copilot right there. And then of course you always have Copilot right here also to help you. What else I think is very powerful is that this app is already responsive, already works for your phone. Look at that, looks beautiful. You can fill out the information. You have all this information, home, four different screens that we have already, uh, equipment requests. We're then gonna have Power Automate. We're then gonna have Power BI. That's why I think this is very possible. You have Copilot here to help you all the way. You can then use Copilot first. I do think even if you know Power Apps very, very well, this is gonna be useful. There are times when you write large JSONs or large switch statements that Copilot can just help you be more productive, right? This is only gonna get better. So I can't wait to see what's gonna happen in two or three years and then eight years down the road. Let me know in the comments, am I right about this? Is Plan Designer as big as I think it is? Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next week.